I'm Gab. He's Jules. Jules, we're doing something totally different for the first time uh, together with those who are watching us. This is a watch along. Amazing, Gab. Gab. I'm so excited. And I love the sign behind you, by the way. It's That's for it. you, my friends. Spread yeah. the love. All right. Uh, so the way this works, in case you're old like me and don't know what a watch along is, Jules and I are watching uh, the UEFA show. We have a, we have separate monitors here. Mine is just over here. And I'm looking at my friend Pedro Pinto and his glasses. Um, so we're going to be commenting in real life what's happening on our screen. So you can either watch us or you can either uh, on one screen and the official thing on the other, uh, or you can uh, just watch us because let's face it. I like to think we're far cooler and more enhanced. Definitely, right? man. And honestly, Definitely. we played two on two basketball. I, I played basketball against Pedro Pinto. If it was me and you against Pedro and Giorgio Marchetti, obviously I would pick up Pedro for, obvi for obvious reasons. Yeah. I'm assuming we could take them, yeah? Yeah, massively. It would be a disaster. It would be a disaster for them. I, I, I would like Absolutely. to. I would like to think so. So right now we're at the stage where Giorgio is repeating the procedure for the draw. Um, and they're, 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 it's really funny because the feed I'm watching is they focus in on different uh, delegates, jewels, club representatives who are present in the hall. I don't know, really know why they need to be present. And of course, next year is just going to be a big computer. But um, yeah, what... this, this is the, are you sad? Because this is the last draw, as in with the balls, like we're going to see today. This is the last one. I, there is a bit of nostalgia here. Yeah, of course. Uh, Remember know. the old mess up of last season or the season before where they had to redo it at some point for the last 16? It, it was interesting because um, the reason they're doing it with the computer has to do, uh, of course, with, uh, with, with the fact that for the knockouts, it's all going to be seeded. So there won't be a draw. It'll be like like Wimbledon, if that's your thing. Yeah. And, um, uh, and, and for the group stages they're using the move transitioning to the Swiss model, right? So it's going to be um, this new system, which I don't think is as complicated as people think, but if you want to know more about it, there's videos out there. Dale Johnson's your man. Um, and they figured out that if they were to do all of that by hand and not by computer, they did a simulation. It would take about four hours. Now I would love me four hours of a draw on Giorgio Marchetti, but that, that'd be kind of tough for most people. Yeah. Well, yeah? yeah. It would be tough. It would be tough. And I think it works. These shows are good because they show a lot of goals, obviously, and they, you know, for every team that's qualified, the eight teams in the quarterfinals, they've got like a little clip and a little VT showing them being happy, celebrating, scoring goals, all of that. They have ambassadors that come on the on the cool. on the set to to draw the balls and everything, which is all cool. But really, we can also do with that, you know. We have one now. The one of the ambassadors has just come out and is making small talk with with Pedro. It's uh, Nigeria's finest, John Obi Mikel, former uh, former Chelsea midfielder, who I'm guessing was must have been in the in, in the, or was in the team that, of course, won Chelsea's first uh, Champions League. That's title. right. Yeah, and the Europa League as well. So he won Champions League, Europa League. Um, really, really nice guy. For the people, if you don't know him, Gab and I have met him a few times. Really, really nice boy. Very remarkable story of how he got to Chelsea as well. Yeah. I mean, this is really going way back. It's interesting because he's one of those guys who I think could have would have naturally been a number 10 if he'd grown up in a different context. But then, <laughs> then of course, was used primarily or more as, as a more defensive uh, midfielder. Yeah. Um, certainly could hit a could hit a pass. Uh, Jules. We remind wow. everybody who's in who's in this row, by the way. You think that's important? Yeah. Uh, of course. Um, uh, let's go through it. In fact, I'm sure they're gonna they're gonna put a graphic up because our producer Sam was harassing us about his graphic and how proud he was. Um, these are the teams in there. You can see the bookies' favorites if you're not familiar with um, with this system of odds. Whatever doesn't really matter. But uh, the shorter the number, the more favored uh, the team. So, unsurprisingly, City are favorites, Jules. Yeah, unsurprisingly, uh, and after that, as we've been saying a lot on the Gab and Jules show as well, Gabby, is, it's quite open behind them. They are clearly the best team right now, and everybody wants to avoid them in this draw today. But behind that, an Arsenal team that has been great so far this season, bar a few games there and there, like the first leg in Porto, or like the defeat of Fulham, for example, in the league, but they've been great. A Real Madrid side that with Jude Bellingham in 
the best form of his life really have been good, but we still maybe expect a little more. Bayern Munich in crisis for most of the season, Tuchel leaving at the end of the season, PSG with Kylian leaving at the end of the season as well. You never really know what you can get from them, but they can be very good, I think. Barca also in crisis for most of the season. Xavi leaving at the end of the season as well. Atletico maybe pulling the biggest step that you would say of the last 16 by knocking at Inter. And then Dortmund, the team that everybody wants to face in the quarterfinal. Yeah, um, two things immediately jump out from these odds. Um, one is that I genuinely think City are obviously overwhelming favorites, but I think anybody, if they trip up, I, I agree with you. I think it, it is fairly wide open. Anybody can win it. Obviously, there's a bigger chance for others. Secondly, the fact that Arsenal are second favorites alongside Real Madrid, to me, that says that the bookies don't actually think experience is that important. Maybe that's just a, you know, one of those cliches that uh, that we throw out there, right? Uh, that it's supposed to be really, really, really. It's a big deal. You need to know the two-legged, um, the two-legged format. Uh, obviously, Bayern's coach has won it before. Thomas Tuchel, Paris yeah. Saint-Germain's coach, Luis Enrique has won it before. Barcelona's coach has won it as a player. Uh, Simeone has been there, done that. Guardiola obviously has won it. Uh, and Ancelotti's done it. Um, yeah. Only Terzic, yeah, really, and Arteta are the ones <laughs> left behind a little bit in this, you know? All right. The first ball is coming out. John Obi Mikel is um, very gingerly unscrewing it. I think he's having some, he's having a few issues there. I, I assume he's going to get better as the uh, morning uh, progresses. And we were talking Arsenal and Mikel Arteta, and it is Arsenal. Arsenal, the first name um, out of the pot. Wow. Um, if I were Giorgio Marchetti, I would tell you that Arsenal have won this and this piece of silverware in this year, and they've won that. Um, I don't know. Remind me. How, what, what European trophies have Arsenal won, Jules? They won a Cup Winners' Cup uh, in the early 90s with you know the in-right team. They lost, obviously, a Champions League final in 2006 in Paris against Barcelona late in the game. Remember all the... Uh, Controversy, the goalkeeper off. sent off. Yeah, oh, no, it was Jens Lehmann. Yeah, Jens Lehmann. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. The lovable Jens Lehmann. Second team now coming out of the box, and it is, I should say, Giorgio Marchetti style, FC Bayern München. Oh, for all times, you know. There you go. So, this is your first quarter final Arsenal against Bayern. Is there a lot of history there? Yeah, of course. They used to knock them out in the last 16, Bayern. Quite a lot. Remember those crazy aggregate years. scores, 8-2, 10-1, uh, <laughs> under Wenger. And obviously, second leg in Munich, in Germany. First leg at the Emirates. Tuchel coming back to London as well, coming back to England. Harry Kane, maybe even more importantly, coming back to London to face the, uh, the old enemy of his, his former Spurs side. He's going to love that. Next team coming out of, my, out of, the, uh, out of the park. Club Atletico de Madrid. And we talked about this, Jules. Yeah. They're not, not fun to play against. Yeah. I mean, we saw against Inter. I was surprised by Inter being knocked out. I won't lie. Um, there's a bit of the old Cholo and the old Atletico, but also a bit of a new one with the Memphis, with Griezmann in great form. Now that he's back from injury, some youngsters as well. It could be an interesting tie, that. All right. You ready? And here we go. And uh, Club Atletico de Madrid will be playing Borussia Dortmund. Oh, oh there how we about go. That? There's always one team that gets jammy, right? Yeah. Every time. Every, Every time. time. Um, wow. Like, okay, I mean, maybe, maybe the most interesting of ties. Let's be honest here. Very inconsistent Dortmund side in the league and also in Europe. They were a bit lucky against PSV. So only the second half of that second leg uh, at the Signal Iduna Park. But, you know, maybe it's a quite open tie, though, because same with Atletico, you don't always know what you're going to get from them. Up next, it's Real Madrid, Club de Football. I'm assuming that's what the CF stands up yeah. with. Uh, there are multiple winners, obviously multiple winners. Nobody's won it more. Uh, Carreto Ancelotti has also won it a whole bunch of times. Um, and... Uh, yeah, Give, me Give me a classico. Give me a classico. Oh my god, can you imagine? All right, classico. 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 Oh, no, sorry. Manchester City. How Woo! about that? There you go. Wow. Anyway, draw a bit like last season, right? 
semi-final of last season. Obviously, remember this incredible second leg at the Etihad and City exploding them. Jude Bellingham coming back to England, of course. And Pep Guardiola think, going back to Spain as well. What a tie. And Chiki Begarishtain that we see on the screen as well. Maybe um, not something. Okay, I don't think it's going to be any surprise what the last matchup is through the uh, sleuthing process of elimination, but we want to know who's going to be at home first, and I can confirm yeah. it's Paris Saint-Germain at the uh, Parc de Pons. And yeah. they will be taking on Barcelona. All right, this brings back bad memories, doesn't it? Oh, don't talk to me about the remontada. I don't want to know anything about it. I don't want to know what happened. I don't want to know the uh, first leg score, the second leg. Uh, they've met they've met many times, obviously, uh, even after the remontada, before the remontada. Some great ties overall, but that's the one everybody are going to talk about, of course, what happened that day, the 6-1 win, Messi, Suarez, the referee, let's be honest a bit. Um, yeah, this time at Montjuic, I don't know what, what, what much of a difference that does compared well, to the camp now. There. It's a crappier stadium. Yeah. Um, I think those will play in. Uh, you know, I, I still think, obviously, for a game of this magnitude, the, the home support's still going to be a factor. It's it's Luis Enrique as well, of going course. back to the club where he won where he won the treble. Um, and I think that's another scene that we're going to hear we're going to hear a lot about going forward. Yeah, I think that's great. Obviously, won as you said the treble in 2015. I played for Barcelona as a player. We saw when. PSG player Real Sociedad and him coming back to Spain. How much he was loving it, those press conferences, all the interviews. He was the star of the show, really. And I think this is that was only in San Sebastian. So imagine him now going back to Barcelona, to Catalonia. It's going to be even crazy. And I know they're doing the um, the rest of the draw now with the semifinal because this is the full That's draw. right. So, so they, draw, they draw this all the way through. So the winners of quarterfinal two, which... Uh, are it's going to be the winner of the Atletico Madrid Borussia Dortmund uh, class, uh, Charles Simeone, against Edin Terzic, will be drawn against. Drum roll, please. Yeah. The winners of, oh, come on. Uh, Obi, John Obi Mikel is holding his fingers in front of the numbers. You can't really see clearly. But I'm <laughs> going to guess that it is the winners of quarterfinal four. Paris Saint Germain against Barcelona. I'll take that, you know. Yeah, we're not going to get. This means that, look, let's face it, Real Madrid City is uh, is going to be is the other half of the draw. That would have been if we had sort of, let's say, a heavy uh, half of the draw. It would have been that one. Um, so this means that the winners of the Arsenal and Bayern game will be taking on the winners of the Madrid and Man City game. Um, this latter half, Jules, Arsenal, yeah. Bayern, and Real Madrid, Man City. Um, this is. Once again, we, we do have a top-heavy side. Yeah, I mean, I think most people would say it's the, the winner is likely to come from these four teams, yeah? Yeah, that's football royalty, really, Champions League royalty. I know Arsenal have never won it, obviously, but when you think about Bayern Munich and Real Madrid, historically, obviously, and City from last season, from being the best team in this competition, we've said that before. This is certainly, which we had a bit last year as well. Remember, one very, very strong side of the draw and then the other one, maybe not, so strong where the two Milan sides were. This this is huge. I mean, and to be fair, you know, we said this is the last draw like this and we said, yeah, you move to something different. It's a different format. Actually, now, after watching this and discussing it with you now, I think I'm going to miss the balls and I'm going to miss that kind of suspense, you know? There is, although let's face it, balls and suspense. There's a reason they're doing this at noon local time on a Friday while everybody's uh, at work, right? True, uh, true. Which is true. that... You know, it's not the greatest TV spectacle. It's funny when we had a meeting earlier this week with uh, um, the UEFA folk, and uh, it emerged that somebody there, um, in fact, I think I can reveal it was, the General Secretary, Theo Theodoridis, um, agrees with me. He had this idea of doing the draw next year where you you take the highest seeded team, right? Yeah. And you let them choose their opponent, but it would be like a draft. Like a draft, they'd, yeah. I saw. Yeah, they'd be on the clock, right? They'd have 30 seconds to say, okay, we want to play them. And then like the next team and so on. I think that would add, that would turn into a proper spectacle, a bit of WWE in there. Um, back to the draw, they've told us who the, that they had to do a draw to determine who the home team would be in the final. 
it will yeah, be at Wembley. Yeah, at Wembley, it, it will be the winner of the Arsenal Bayern and Real Madrid Man City half of the draw. I think this is totally irrelevant. I'm assuming you agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah but least- you know, the, it's this is the color of the shirt, this the which dressing room. You you have to you have to do it. You know, there's there's always that. Uh, but yeah, the most important really are those four ties that we have just been drawn. Uh, okay, maybe the Atletico Madrid Dortmund, you would say, is the one that people are going to be interested the less, unless you're a Dortmund and Atletico fan. But the other three are pretty special, right? Uh, there's no question. And I think it's we're not going to have any issues, I think, coming up with uh, uh, themes and, and storylines for, for any of these. Um, people love for us to analyze and, and make predictions that they can then clip and make fun of us of uh, later. It's part of the reason why we have this responsibility and get paid the big bucks to do it, Jules. <laughs> Shall we do this? Are, 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 are you ready? We've touched upon themes. Should yeah. we touch upon favorites, maybe even early percentages? Um, <clears throat> let's start with Atletico Madrid against Borussia Dortmund. Um I think it is pretty big that Atleti are playing at home first. Uh, mm. Atleti this season, um, I think I'm right in saying they, they've won every game they've played bar one, uh, which they drew at home. Um, it, it does create a situation where if you're Borussia Dortmund, you kind of know what you have to do back at the Westfalen Stadion. Both these teams are currently fourth in their domestic competitions. Both yeah. these teams are in are in danger of not qualifying for the Champions League next year. Probably Atletico Madrid in more danger simply because um, there's really no chance that, or almost no chance that Spain will get five spots next year, whereas there's a very good chance that Germany will. Um, We think this is really going to impact kind of their approach and preparation to the game. They cannot tank and rest players and whatnot. They have to take this seriously, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't think either of those two teams are going to win the Champions League this season. So they will still have to focus a lot on the league for obvious reasons. But I think if you're Dortmund, you're quite happy with Atletico, who I think were of the all the others that Dortmund could face, maybe the, the weakest one, if we can call it that. Although I think the boost from their win against Inter is going to be massive for this team. And then if you're Atletico Madrid, you've picked the weakest team of the whole draw. So you will be happy with that. They are so good. They've been so good in... In, in the Champions League or the Europa League at home at uh, the Civitas. I think I was saying the other day um, on the on the show with you yesterday on, on Thursday that the, f- the 50 games that El Cholo has coached in Europe at home, they've only lost five of those 50. It's remarkable. Only Pep and Jose have the, the same record, which is obviously a record. So, yeah, at home they will fancy the, the chances and then you go away to Germany for the second leg. If you've done all the work in the first leg, you'll be okay. And even if you don't, we've seen this Dortmund side at times struggling a bit at home against PSG in the group stages, for example, uh, against Milan as well, even against PSV in the last 16. So I would, for me, Atletico have to be favourite. Maybe not massively, maybe a 55-45. Maybe if, you're, if you really believe in, in, in El Cholo 60-40, but but yeah, they would be favorite. I'm gonna go 60 40 in this one. I'm a big believer in shutdown keepers, and I am uh, a big Jan Oblak fan. Um, but you're right, this is wide open. Any one of these teams can step up, they have the individuals, but um, I think I think they're favorites here. Um, so I gotta do this, but the other one, Paris Saint Germain against Barcelona, an injury riddled Barcelona, and we have to say this. I mean, I think there's yeah. a chance Frankie de Jong is back for this game. We know Gavi and Pedri will not be back. Um, and we have this this thing hanging over everybody that Xavi has said he's not going to be back next year. I don't know what will change his mind. Uh, how do you approach this uh, if you're if you're Luis Enrique? I mean, I, I think I think I think if you're Luis Enrique and we saw tactically how good they were against Real Sociedad, who are good they're a good, decent team, good little team, but not obviously of the level of a Champions League quarterfinal. So there are things that have been working really well for PSG, some patterns of play that are clear to see. I think they need one. I mean, this is this is a big game for them. Even if I think they would be favorite against Barcelona, I think they're a better team than Barcelona. A Barcelona side that right now, 
relies a lot on Lamin Yamal's talent, who's 16, and to a certain extent, were carried by Pau Kubasi in the um, in the last 16 second leg against Napoli, who's standing at the back at 17 years old. So I think PSG would be favourite. It's Kylian's time, of course, uh, for his last season at the club. Again, taking him to Spain for this for this round of the Champions League, where all the eyes are going to be on him, like they were in the last 16 against Real Sociedad. And I think if Mbappe is on top form, he won't be. He, he's unstoppable. So for me, Luis Enrique, for Luis Enrique, it's all about putting Kylian in the right environment, like we saw in the second leg against Real Sociedad, where Dembele played at the fourth nine to leave all that space for Mbappe, who scored two goals. That plan worked perfectly. I don't know what the plan would be against Barcelona. I think Barcelona will be more predictable now when you play against them. They're a good team, of course, and they are capable, as we saw against Napoli, home and away, to have really good moments in games, but they don't have the consistency over 90 minutes. That's why I think PSG will have to be favourite. And for me, I would go 60-40 PSG, maybe even 65-35. Yeah, for me, I think uh, Paris Saint-Germain, heavy favourites in this. Uh, I'll go as far as 65, maybe even 70% against Barcelona. Um you know, there is the undeniable fact that Paris Saint-Germain, I know Brest are one of the stories of the season, but they're not going to catch them. Um, Barcelona, of course, don't have much to ask uh, of the league, but um, so they can also kind of really focus yeah. and, and prepare on this game, which I think is important. But then it comes down to talent. It comes down to coaching. It comes down to the authority of the coaching. I love Xavi, but I think Luis Enrique – you know, really, really is likely to have a plan. I look at matchups too. I mean, Mbappe against Kunde uh, or or Araujo. You know, depending how he uses them, we don't know if it's going to be the Dembele false nine. If you know, we've seen Gonzalo Ramos through the middle. We, we've seen Mbappe through the middle, right? Um, there's a lot of weapons. It's difficult to prepare. Um, it was wonderful as Paul Kubarzi or Kubarezi as I think Kubarezi, you know, yeah. from from now on going forward. I, it's a big, big ask. The only thing that could really mess things up, I think, is if Mbappe somehow gets distracted. Um, negotiations with Real Madrid, uh, stuff off the pitch, the kebab shop that he's suing. Yeah, I don't know, maybe. something like that. And then chaos, controversy around Paris Saint-Germain. But then again, they, they're used to living with chaos and controversy, as are Barcelona, frankly. Yeah, so exactly. yeah, um, I think we're on board on that one. Yeah. Arsenal against Bayern. Um, wow. Yeah, so this is interesting. All right, we, we yeah. covered the subplots. Tuchel back to London. Harry Kane against uh, against his old enemy. Um, there's one undeniable thing here. Arsenal are involved in a legit three-way title race. Yeah. Bayern or not. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's absolutely huge. Yeah, you're right. It is massive. I think it is massive. It would make a big difference. Even if Bayern will never like lay down and let Bayern Leverkusen, Leverkusen you know, they, they will try to keep winning to keep the pressure on. But it's ten points. Let's be realistic here with nine games to go. So they know the chances are slim to be able to catch them. So the Champions League becomes massive. You believe, and you wrote a really good column about it a few days ago that Bayern can still win this competition. That they can raise the level when it matters the most in the Champions League, which I agree with you, to be fair. And that's why, for me, this is very much 50-50. I believe in this Arsenal team. I believe in Arteta. I think they can, on their day, beat anybody, even over two legs. We saw that when they beat Liverpool and City in the league, for example. They can also have bad days like everybody else. And this Bayern team have been has been in crisis a lot this season. They haven't really played that great. So, um, I th it takes us to... I think thin, mar small margin, thin margins. It, it might be a case of Saka against Alfonso Davies or whoever, or Rafael Guerrero, whoever plays at the left on the left hand side. It will be Kane, who was so good at scoring with Spurs against Arsenal in all those North London derbies that he played through his career. Him against Gabriel and Saliba. Uh, you know, even the two goalkeepers, Raya and Neuer, one with huge Champions League experience in Neuer, Raya, who was great against Porto in the second leg, but who's discovering really the Champions League. So there's so many narratives, so many great things, you know, it's going to be fascinating. Yeah. Uh, you, you gave this a 50, 50, right? Um, yeah. I am going to, I'm going to lean Bayern on this one. And look, I, I think Arsenal are, are a better team. If, if, Ars if Bayern were in the Premier League, um, they would be behind Arsenal this season. I, I, I really believe that. Uh, 
equally, all the eggs are in this basket for Bayern. Uh, I do think experience matters a little bit, the ability to be rattled. I, you know, you look through this Arsenal team, and other than Gabriel Jesus, who we're not sure if he's going to uh, start, uh, other than him, Havertz, and, and Jorginho, correct me if I'm missing somebody, there's nobody who has any kind of significant uh, European experience or Champions League experience, uh, certainly. Uh, neither does Mikel Arteta as a coach, other than as an assistant. As a number one, yeah. To, to Pep, yeah. Certainly not as a number one. Um, there's a lot more of that on the Bayern side. I think Bayern are also a much deeper team, despite all the crying and, and, and whinging that Tuchel does about, I, I need a six, I need a six, and a Numa's X, all this nonsense. Um, I think these things matter. I, I think there are some players, I think, for Arsenal who, if they get hurt, there is no alternative, right? And, and we saw yeah. what happened to Saliba last season. Um, you know, everybody's got players like that. Obviously, there's no alternative to Harry Kane if he gets hurt. But I think overall, Arsenal are more vulnerable. Arsenal will be tested much more in the league. So for that reason, I'm going to say Bayern 52%. They, okay. Arsenal 48%. Finally, I think we can call it the big one, yeah? Yeah, uh, the, the best for last. More Champions League titles than anyone versus the, uh, <laughs> the reigning champions. Real Madrid against Manchester City, Jules. Yeah, I mean, for Real Madrid, it's, I think, all about revenge. I, I, revenge is a strong word, but take it just in the football perspective. After what happened last season, the 1-1 draw at the Bernabeu uh, in the first leg was a, was a good draw. Vinny scoring first, KDB answering. And I don't think anybody expected what we saw then at the Etihad in the second half. For me, certainly the games that, where I was at, where, that I saw live, the best of the season by far. That City performance, especially in the first half, was just out of this world. They pressed them so well. They suffocated them. They outplayed them from start to finish, pretty much. And and I th I think if you're Real Madrid now, you remember what happened last season and you want to do better. It's the same format, home at the Bernabeu and second leg in, in Manchester. It's going to be fascinating. Right now, I think I know this Real Madrid team has great qualities. You know, that midfield of Valverde, Camavinga, Les many Bellingham, for example, if you can add Cruz or Modric if you want for control, experience, uh, creativity, anything you want, maybe. But I think this, this, midfield, this midfield is impressive, especially Bellingham in the form that he is. And then Vinicius and whoever else plays with him up front is good. I think the City team is great on the other hand. And especially if it's a Nacho, Rudiger, uh, pair of centre-back against Haaland, for example, if KDB is fit, if Foden is still in the form that he is currently, I think it'd be very difficult for this Real Madrid team to stop City, especially with the second leg in England. So I will have to say City are favourite for me. I think 55-45 is probably fair, but I would understand if people think that it's even higher than that. Because right now, I can't really see this Real Madrid side being able to beat City over two legs. Yeah, look, I mean, City are favourites for a reason. Um, I think the second leg at home would have made a difference for Real Madrid. Sure. The whole Miedo, Senegal, all that stuff. Um, and we've seen in the past, it certainly made a difference uh, for them. Um, I think an advantage for Real Madrid, though, is that, again, they're not involved in a title race. Um, yeah. They've gotten more accustomed to playing with their injured players. Um, you know, I'm guessing Ederson will maybe back, may just be back for this game if he's just, back. Just about to be, yeah, April. I think that's touch and go. Um, and again, when a goalkeeper just comes back, is he the same? I don't know that. I mean, I think that could be a factor. Um, you know, you mentioned Nacho Rudiger against Erling Holland. Well, that's the best case scenario for Real Madrid, that it's those two guys, because you get beyond that. Um, I mean, maybe you can, Chouameni gives you something a little different, but then you lose in terms of physicality. Militao, there's some suggestions that he could be back in training, but I have no idea what condition you're in, certainly after the injuries he, he's had. It yeah. takes a long time to get yeah, to get sure. fit again. Yeah, like that straight away. Sorry? You can't play a game like that, you know, straight away. Yeah, I, I, I'd be very surprised. Um, I hope we see him at some point in the Champions League, but I don't think it's going to be um, in this tie. So I, I think this just puts just puts a lot of pressure on Real Madrid. Mm. Flip side, City are in a three-way title race like Arsenal. And, you know, 
City have had some defensive hiccups um, yeah. in the way they play. I think, you know, we've often, we're both big fans or, or people who really recognize the importance of Rodri. I think I'd go so far as say that Rodri is maybe the one player that is maybe the most indispensable player to maybe even more than Holland. Uh, I mean, every game they've lost, City this season was without Rodri. So I think this is a fair point that you mentioning. Yeah, I mean, look, we can say Holland's a better player, sure. De Bruyne is a better player, but they've won. They've got other guys who can do what De Bruyne and Holland do effectively. Yeah. Uh, they have to, I don't think anybody else who can do what who can do what, what, what Rodri does. Could an injury come into it? Wear and tear? I think Real Madrid need that. Um, so yeah, for me. I'm going to go, I'm going to give Real Madrid a few more chances just because, hey, it's kind of like Ancelotti. There's a reason he's won it a bunch of times and they can pull things out of their hat. They have individual match winners, which I think they certainly have as many individual match winners, I would say, as, as City. And City have a lot, you know. Um, yeah. When you think of Vinicius, Valley, it's more, it's Madrid, more about, I think, the how you will press or how you can beat the City press. That I'm not really sure, which is exactly what we saw in that second leg last season, for example, at the Bernabeu. I'm not sure how how adventurous, let's put it that way, City will be and how how much they will be. They might be a bit more cautious. At the Etihad, I'm just not sure how Real Madrid can 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 go and press and get at them. And on the other hand, also resist the press that City and the intensity that City are going to put and the pressure that they're going to put on them in their own half, like we saw last year. I don't think the Jude Bellingham arrival, for example, changes much the dynamic on that point. And that's where... Real Madrid lost that tie, lost that second leg last oh. season. It was not unable to respond to that intensity and that pressure from City and City recovering the ball all the time, super high in the in the Real Madrid half. And and even if you put a cruise on a Modric this season in these games, and I'm you can't play them both would be capable of that. And you're not yeah. going to play them both at the same time for obvious reasons. It's really funny with Bellingham. I'm going to come out and be the first to say it, maybe. I'm wondering if this is the game where Carletto pulls something out of a hat and maybe we see Bellingham playing in a different position for that very reason. You know, if you do think they're going to come and try to press the life out of you uh, and you're concerned about how press resistant some of these guys can be, what if you play Bellingham deeper? What if you bring Bellingham back to his original um, position, throw a curveball at them, you know, not saying Vinicius or on his own or whatever, but you know, you try to do yeah, you can, something yeah. like that. I, there are options. I think, you know, Ancelotti doesn't, he doesn't often mess with his system and his concepts, but he's done them. He's been around a long time. He knows all of them. Um, I wonder if, he, if he's going to be tempted to do that. Um, but anyway, Jules, I am, I'm excited. I like this competition. Yeah, you know it's going to be amazing. Those people said, oh, the round of 16 is boring. No. I loved it. it. I, I thought the games were tight. I thought they were good. <laughs> some really good football. Um, we know some big guns are going to necessarily go out at this stage uh, as a competition. So that's going to, you know, generate more stories. That's going to have a big impact. Yeah. Um, yeah. What can I say? I'm hyped and I'm amped. Yeah. Let's go. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, uh, thanks for watching this. Um, if enough of you watched, our bosses will probably say, "Oh, look, people will watch you. You two guys watching television, uh, which is essentially what a watch along is." Thanks for taking the time out to watch us. Uh, if you're not watching live, thanks for not watching live. Um, and we're going to be back. Remember, the Gab and Jewel Show coming to you every Monday and Thursday. It's a podcast. It's on YouTube. It's on television, depending what parts of the world you're in. So you can follow us on that. You can catch us on the FC show. Obviously, we both write for uh, the FC website. Um, reach out. Be in touch. Let us know what you think. For me and Jules, have a good one.